This tutorial is hopefully a quick overview of what databases are, of what SQL is, and what SQL can be used for, and why it's such a powerful language and technology to learn, um, so that hopefully we can start making the most of the tutorials on W3 Schools website. So firstly, what are databases um, and how can we be using them and why is SQL useful? Well, imagine you've got one person who wants to keep track of their shopping list. Now, the simplest form of database is just a piece of paper with your shopping list written on it. You've stored that information. That's a database. The data's stored. You can look at, look at it later. You can even have multiple shopping lists on different sheets of paper, um, and that's a database. Stored, ready for you to access or search through later. It would be much more useful if it was on a computer um, so that you could quickly search through possibly 10 um, shopping lists or thousands of shopping lists um, throughout your whole life. You can archive them if you're into that sort of thing um, and find out what you um, bought or what your parents bought in the past, um, how will the prices change. So if you computerized it, it's better because you're able to search through it and store more stuff. If you save that database as a file, possibly like a, an access database, um, then it becomes a little bit more tricky if two people want to use that file at the same time. Because um, in access, only one person can access that file at once. So if two people want to um, access their, um, their shopping lists, they have to agree with each other to make sure that they're not using the same database at the same time. So imagine if you've got a whole planet full of people who want to use an online tool, like um, an online supermarket that stores all of the ingredients and how much it costs and when they're going to run out of date and everything like that. We need um, a database that's able um, to have millions of people all accessing that data at the same time. So we can't use just a piece of paper anymore. We can't use just one file like Microsoft Access anymore. It has to be something more useful. Um, so you could write a program in pretty much any language, um, any program in language, that would let you search through um, and store all of that data. But you've also got to bear in mind that that data might be being used on a whole um, variety of different devices, some tablets, some netbooks, some laptops, some smartwatches, whatever. Um, all of these different devices are going to be working with that database, so adding new data, searching for data, editing data, deleting data at the same time as each other from different places, using different programming languages. So it becomes really difficult to make sure that the data um, is reliable and going out to all of these different places in the right sort of way. So that's where SQL comes in. SQL is just a text-based language. It's, it stands for Structured Query Language. And it's a universal way of letting any program on any device talk to a database um, and get the data back out again. So whether you're writing a program in Python on a Raspberry Pi, or whether you're writing it in Java on a desktop, or you're writing it in C++ on a desktop or whatever, you can still access the same database using the same query, the same SQL code to be able to talk to the same database. And that is why SQL is so powerful. It's the technology behind pretty much any modern website um, and it powers anything from Google search engine to Amazon's online shop. Um, uh, and it just lets you search through, add or delete or modify um, any data online um, or any application. So the language of databases, well, um, if we go to the W3Schools website, there's a whole load of different tutorials that talk you through how to write SQL. And this is SQL. This is the text, the structured query language um, that we're going to learn how to, how to use. So if you click on Try It Yourself on any of them, um, the W3Schools website has a database that we can play around with. It works best in Google Chrome or Firefox. It does work in Internet Explorer, but not quite as well. So this database has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different tables. Um, each table stores a certain type of data. So this table, a customer's table, stores information about all of the different customers in an imaginary shop. So a table is a whole group, a grid of information about the same type of thing. In this example, of all of the different customers in an imaginary shop. Inside the table, a row is known as a record. So think R for row and R for record. 
um, and a rowing boat goes along the water so it's across rather than up. So a record is just one item in a table or in our example it's one customer. Inside the records we split it down into different fields. So in this table we have one field called customer ID, another field called customer name, another field called contact name. So it's a little nugget of information that's separate from all the other fields. So it's like splitting up the information into chunks. And we also need to know what a primary key is. And a primary key is a field that is unique for every record in your table. So none of these numbers are allowed to be the same. And it's also used to be able to link between tables. So this table is our table of customers. So we've got six customers that we can see here. And there's 92 of them in the whole table. And this field, the customer ID, is um, used, let's have a look, on orders. You can see that the customer ID is also used in orders to keep track of who, or, who placed that order. So primary key is a unique number that's used to link together more than one table.